Yeah. Perfect. Morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Greg. Thank you all. Um, as Greg said, hopefully I'm going to be the espresso or the double espresso for the morning. I'm sure sharp and punchy, and hopefully give a. I guess an honest insight into the journey I've been on, we've been on at Norico, and what that represents. Just turn that one over. And the next one. So I think, firstly, uh, go to the next slide, please. First point, really, it's us in this room. I think entrepreneurialism, uh, the highs and lows of it, and everything that go with it. But fundamentally, it's about, you know, we are the beating economic heartbeat, those that make these decisions to sort of boldly go and see our visions through or try and create something. You know, and as that comment says, you know, ladies and gentlemen, us, so uh, well done to you all for being here and all of us who are trying to uh, carve our own path out. What do we do as a business? We deliver commercial scale solar installations, predominantly on commercial buildings, agricultural buildings, private estates, a uh, little bit of the construction sector and some more, more unique work overseas. In terms of the next slide though, in terms of how it all started, why entrepreneurialism and everything else, there's all these lovely terms and words about entrepreneurialism and I think I was... Um, giving a guest lecture at the University of Bath to a friend the other week at the Man School of Management. And uh, one of the students at the end said, you know, what should I expect on this journey? What should it look like? And my uh, parting wisdom in a, a blunt Nick term was, buckle up, buttercup. Uh, and I think, you know, that probably resonates with so many because there are some incredible highs and lows and everything in between. And it really is that roller coaster. And, you know, as you can see on the right-hand side, I'm always, I always remember I was at a friend's wedding in Newcastle many years ago. And it was a black and white cartoon, it might be Matt or whatever it was, and um, there was a chap who'd given up against the 99th brick wall who'd banged his head through, and the pot of gold was on the other side. And I couldn't find the cartoon, but I think it sort of illustrates it. And it's that tenacity, grit and resilience, I think, that sees so many of us through, uh, and what it's about and where we go. If I go to the next slide, please. So how did I get here? Uh, it was probably a different journey to some, maybe. I spent my um, early years at University of Leeds doing uh, advanced colouring in, aka geography, and looking at the environment, sustainability, the uh, military kindly sent me there. I spent my informative years with young Nick there, uh, a young infantry officer in the army, that was me, I think 2008, commanding the last combat unit out in Baghdad. Um, I decided that running around the Middle East and getting shot at was probably not something I wanted to carry on doing for the rest of my life, and so left in 2011. Uh, and actually had some uh, crashing realities. The military has some wonderful um, sort of transitional transitions and some great skill sets that you can take through. Commercial acumen is not one. Uh, I was once asked in my first interview, what's a PL? What does it look like? And the only thing I could cite was looking after my mess bill uh, and actually apparently having mail delivered or ammunition in a helicopter doesn't constitute reality in terms of the actual financials against it. Um, so I took my commercial apprenticeship. Um, I had an interview stopped at me, I think, after about five minutes when um, they asked me to do a mathematical equation and I asked if I could use my calculator and the chap said, maybe it's not for you. So uh, declining the uh, ex-military backdoor route to the city and wanting to stay in the southwest, I'd been posted in Warminster and living in Bath, uh, I decided I needed to gain some commercial acumen and I went to work for a chap called Mike Church. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows MJ Church, large regional, regional civil engineering business. Uh, a really incredible entrepreneur in his own right. Started on sort of a bulldozer and a digger, uh, and now he's running a sort of 150 million turnover civil engineering business. So I worked for Mike for a year, called it my commercial apprenticeship. I got shouted at lots, told I need to sell trucks, move stone, this, that, and the other. Uh, but a really wonderful period, and actually, it really gave me that insight into what a PL is and running my own business. Next slide, please. So where did it go after that? Well, 2016, I'd been involved in renewables for a while and decided that we wanted to go on our own. Uh, my wife Amanda and I, so we took that bold call, we remortgaged the house, rolled it on black, as you do, and thought this would be a good idea. So from someone who is never bets, uh, it was a pretty big move for me. Um, village halls and farmers markets, you've got to start somewhere, so um, being the puffer fish and trying to act bigger than we were and peddling our wares and village halls and everything and trying to flog solar systems like some double glazing salesperson I was trying not to be. Um, and saying yes, I think the Richard Branson analogy of um, screw it, just do it really resonates there. And I call it diversification of revenue and spreading the risk. I think it's also a term I'd call spray and pray, of hoping something actually stuck to a wall. Uh, eight years later on, we're now in boardrooms and lunches, which is much more uh, enjoyable than village halls maybe, and uh, trying to uh, see what we can get. And very much focused on professionalizing the business. And I put kids as the last point, because I think I'm sure it will resonate with everyone here, that the reality is that for so many of us, kids are also an underlying feature in all that we do. 
um, you know, we have these businesses and, you know, our professional world, but the personal underpins it. With that comes everything from the guilt of missing a sports day or whatever it may be, trying to juggle it and balance it, but also trying to give a bit of uh, purpose and education and insight to our own children, touch upon what Greg said. They learn by osmosis from us, and it's trying to be present, uh, but trying to provide that right example. And I think one of the real drivers for me in setting up this business was a lot of people say, what, what's the intention? It's to try and provide a positive legacy for this generation and the next. Uh, climate change is something quite close to my heart. And so when someone says, what did you do? Uh, I'd like to be able to say, I tried. So what makes your eco? Um, values really are at the core of what we're about. We wanted to be a business with pur purpose and actually passionate about what we do. Uh, B Corp is something we're really proud to have achieved. I think when we got it last year, we got one of the highest scores in the Southwest, which isn't lost on me because at any one day we have about 25 people driving around the country to all four corners in the UK of pickup trucks burning diesel and towing trailers, which for a renewable energy business is a, an acceptance or a reality that, quite frankly, electric vehicles won't get us where we need to go. Um, we save a lot of carbon for our clients, but it's not, our cli it's not ours. So uh, B Corp was great for us. We're also a carbon neutral business. We founded an agroforestry charity over in Central America. Uh, and over the last few years, I think we planted about 400,000 trees and 500 smokeless stoves at the moment. So we give 1.5% of all our profits to that, which keeps us accountable to ourselves. Also links to that is the Armed Forces Covenant. Uh, I'm a strong believer in that and purpose uh, and giving back. 50% of our staff still come from the military and the forces. And we also support a charity called REACT, where most of our field teams still volunteer. Um, which is a disaster relief charity that repurposes veterans and, and utilizes them post-disaster. So uh, many of the guys who work for me now I've met in far-flung corners of the world, from Haiti post-hurricane through to working in the Congo, in Ebola, uh, Nepal after the earthquake, Philippines post-typhoon, and all these things. So we take you know, ex-servicemen and women, bring them into the organization, and try and repurpose them, but give that culture around it. A military approach, I think the military doesn't lose you in some ways, and it's what I know, hence let's use it to our advantage. Two key things we talk about, we talk about a lot about our main effort, which is what we want to achieve. And the easiest way of explaining that is if you've got 100 soldiers in your mission and you say your main effort is to take the house on top of the hill, if 99 of those 100 don't make it, but one of them stands there and goes, what was I meant to do? Oh yeah, take the building on the top of the hill and he gets it, you've achieved your main effort. So we talk about that to our team each week, what's the main effort for the week, the month, the year, so actually our team can understand everything they're doing and how they work towards it. Uh, and the UDA loop's another interesting one. Uh, a chap called Colonel Bray, he was a US uh, fighter pilot in the Korean War. Uh, the US Air Force were losing much heavily numbers in um, dogfighting in the sky, and he was talking about how do they get better about it. And he came up with this concept called UDA loop, observe, orientate, decide, act. And the quicker you can circle through your UDA loop, the quicker you can make informed decisions. So we talk about observing the situation, orientating to it, deciding what we're going to do and act, because actually it's better to act. Although what we say is don't mistake it, with, which we used to call the young officer's version, which was observe, overreact, deny, and apologize, uh, which probably most of us can cite in business as well. Kai's and I is keys to us. Um, so and Amanda, why I called in or touch upon that, but you know, what's that about? That's about trying to make things better. We, we talk a lot about you don't know what you don't know, right? But when you do know it, you can do something about it. We know there's lots of things we probably don't know, but when we do know them, it's our time to try and do something better. We want that continuous improvement across the business. Uh, and legacy, I talked about purpose and what we want to do, but I also cite, I said, James Kerr wrote the legacy book on the New Zealand All Blacks and leaving the shirt in a better place. That's very much what we want to be doing as a business, making sure that every day we're getting better and leaving the business in a positive place. Next one, please. Uh, I think I missed a slide there. Um, there was one on, was one on growth in there? No. I think we've missed one or it's not managed to go its way through. There was another slide talking about where we are on a journey and you can see our sort of scaling from sort of do, 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 and then really taking off um, on our platform growth and doubling year on year and how we've achieved that. And really how we've achieved that, I'm trying to visualize the slide in my head right now, is uh, focusing on the business and systems, hiring smarter, and focusing on the detail. Um, I often laugh because uh, I had to uh, bring Amanda back to business, my wife, and uh, the question was always, can I afford her? Uh, so we now can, and so Amanda's come back and really runs it, but really giving that systems and processes and professionalizing the business. And also hiring better. Um, you know, at the scale we were at previously, we had the staff for that. We're at a very different level with our client base now. So we've just taken on a new project manager from Dyson. 
We've taken another naval officer across as a project manager, and we're really trying to upskill and transition our team to be able to deal with the nature of flying. So we've gone from owner managers, now we're looking much more PLC levels, uh, and indeed on an international basis and what that looks like. So that real transition and how we change that from a business perspective. Um, hopefully that probably covered off the slide I had in my head. Um, words of advice. Bernie Brown, I th she's been really interesting. Uh, again, I can't take credit for that. Thank you, Amanda, for putting me onto that. Take advice from people in the arena. Lots of people like to give you advice, but the reality, it's those of us in this room who are on these journeys that can often best inform each other and learn from those experiences. And one of the values and mantras we use heavily, and actually it's probably our most used emoji, uh, emojis in WhatsApp conversations, Slack, or whatever it may be, is the buffalo. Uh, there was a really interesting piece of work done on buffaloes and cows on the plains, and I think it was in North America. But ultimately, when a storm comes in, the cows try and run away from the storm, and they're caught up in that for ages, getting punished and hammered in the, in the eye of the storm. Whereas the buffalo puts its head down and charges through. And I think what we talk about is as our team, is being more buffalo. And so we recognize there are periods that are busy. You know, we've got two months coming up where we know it's gonna be high intensity. And my pep talk to the team was, you know, be more buffalo. Head down, you're gonna have to charge at it, and you'll get through it quicker if you embrace the suck. And at the same time, you know, also on a daily basis when things happen and problems arise, let's be more buffalo about it. Let's accept it's happened, not understand, we need to understand why, but let's face it head on and try and drive it forward. So. Um, my lasting advice to you all from hopefully today will be be more buffalo. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dick.